Hi William, it's great speaking with you today. Could you start by telling me about your background and how you became to be Editor-in-Chief of Pharmaceutical Executive? Yes, um, well I started my career in the early 1980s. I was a uh, journalist for the Economist Intelligence Unit, um, issued, wrote, wrote reports and different um, topics relating to multinational companies. And from there, I went into the pharma industry, uh, worked for a number of years at a major drug company called Warner Lambert, um, went back into consulting, uh, spent a lot of time developing um, health policy proposals, uh, taking co pharmaceutical companies around on um, investigatory visits to health systems in China, Japan, most of Western Europe. And finally, from there, I went to Pfizer, where I was um, head of um, international policy for about 10 years, mainly working with the major markets of the company, Japan, Germany, France, the UK. And um, recently, I retired from Pfizer and am now serving in this role as editor-in-chief of Farm Executive magazine. So can you tell us about your audience and why do you think Pharma Exec is so popular? Well, thank you for saying that it's popular. I, uh, we, we don't have a lot of specific metrics that would absolutely demonstrate that. Um, it is read relatively widely. We have a circulation of about uh, 20,000 in print and over 70,000 online. Uh, I think it's popular in the sense that it's, um, it occupies an interesting niche in the industry and that it covers both um, business issues, but also personality. So there's kind of a human touch to what we write about. Um, it's um, broad, broad. it's globally oriented. It's um, looking at issues from strategy to execution. Uh, we uh, do a lot of work in um, identifying future trends and issues. So in those um, four different areas, I think we're well known, and um, it's um, it's also a very visual magazine, as you can tell as well. It's it's not peer reviewed, um, but it's um, a mixture of fact and flavored opinion. And what do you think have been the biggest stories over the past year for the pharma industry? Uh, the biggest stories, well, uh, the most important, I think, is the um, debate over the structure and future of R and D. Uh, whether the um, substantial investments, investments in um, in-house um, discovery and development is, is worth the, the funds expended, or whether the alternative approach of contracting out research and developing partnerships with academic institutions is a, is a more appropriate way to go. That debate still hasn't been resolved, but it's um, really a driving issue in the pharmaceutical industry today. I'd summarize it in the sense of getting the most productivity out of your R&D investment. Um, the second big issue for the industry is uh, the whole debate about market access and how to facilitate appropriate reimbursement for pharmaceutical products. Uh, governments, um, payers in general, have become more um, aggressive and demanding value from their investments in drugs. Uh, the payer base is consolidated, so they have more clout in um, evaluating the, the merits of different uh, product entries. So the industry has to respond with a uh, stronger set of um, tools and um, metrics to show that what it's uh, offering to patients and payers is, is useful. So I would classify that as a second big issue. A third issue is, again, uh, gaining control over the supply chain. Uh, as the industry becomes more global, it's more and more important to reach for efficiency in how you um, manufacture, distribute, uh, produce your medicines. You also have to be careful about safety and risk issues, uh, the ramifications of a uh, product re recall now reverberate much more than in one country. So um, controlling the supply chain uh, is a very, very important strategic issue for the industry. It's also a big reputational issue because, as you can see, the issue of drug shortages in the United States uh, has created a lot of, of concern among patients and also among politicians who expect the industry to deliver adequate amounts of necessary drugs safely and uh, expeditiously to the market. 
So those, I think, are some of the big issues. So we've been covering them in the magazine extensively. And what type of stories do you find the most interesting to report on? Well, uh, personally, I'm, I'm very interested in the relationship between business and policy. That's kind of the motto I've put on the magazine since I took over as editor-in-chief. Uh, there's a, a, a perception that business is not about the relationship with other stakeholders beyond the investment community or your customer base, but the drug industry is, um, is, a, is a major asset uh, to the world uh, in producing life-saving drugs. 90% of uh, the drugs in use today, up over 90%, are produced by the private sector so um, there's a huge policy element to the, what the industry does, and I find it very interesting to to develop and cover that particular aspect of uh, of the industry, the the policy dimension, and how it relates to the commercial aspects. Uh, this is a um, industry that's reputation depends heavily on the relationship with governments and media and other um, public entities, and it's important that the um, the reputation of the industry is upheld. So um, what I do as a journalist, try to identify flaws in the, in the industry case, but also identify what the industry is doing well. And what's the craziest story that you've ever reported on? The craziest? Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, pharmaceutical executive is not a tabloid, so um, it's hard to really answer that uh, uh, particular question. I think... Some of the um, issues relating to U.S. health reform are, are, I could call them crazy because they're so confusing. There's so much um, uh, tech, technical uh, complexity coupled with uh, political uh, posturing by the different parties. Uh, only in the U.S. could you have a, a um, thousands of pages of legislation that is now being reviewed by the Supreme Court and the, with an eye to throwing the whole thing out, um, um, centering on a debate about a pretty obscure constitutional issue about the Commerce Clause in the Constitution and the role of states in the federal government. And this is all taking place around what is fundamental, which is access to health care and the obligation of an individual to have health care coverage. That seems to be a pretty uh, pretty crazy debate uh, if you look at the standard and benchmark in other industrialized countries where that issue was resolved generations ago. And what does the future hold for pharmaceutical executives? Uh, in terms of the future, well, we're definitely expanding our role in the online community. Uh, we're developing a lot more blogging activity. We have a lot of guest bloggers as well. Um, so we're building up our uh, online franchise extensively. The other thing uh, we're doing is, is using the brand, the Pharmazic brand, to, to work into more um, other sources of providing information, reports, studies, e-books, for example. William, it's been great to hear your thoughts today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. 